la force du modèle européen et de concilier l'économique et le social et d'y associer désormais pleinement la dimension environnementale. Je fais mienne cette déclaration de Jacques Delors de 2016 quand il dit « Si l'élaboration des politiques européennes compromet la cohésion et sacrifie des normes sociales, ce projet européen n'a aucune chance de recueillir le soutien des citoyens européens. Et nous avons aujourd'hui, plus que jamais, besoin de gagner ce soutien et la confiance des citoyens. Le renforcement de la dimension sociale qui concrétise une Europe qui protège et est au service de ses citoyens en est un élément essentiel. Je m'engage solennellement devant vous à m'atteler à cette tâche dans l'écoute, la concertation et le dialogue. Welcome here in the House of the European Union. First of all, the question, Christoph, um, you, were, you were explaining you're, you're, you are part of the steering committee for your political group for the hearing of uh, trade com uh, de designate trade commissioner Phil Hogan. So how do you guys decide if he made it or not? Or if he will pass as a commissioner? Well, we had, of course, inside our political group immediately after the hearing of Phil Hogan yesterday evening at uh, around uh, 9 o'clock in the evening, we had then uh, our meeting with the members of my political group saying, well, uh, we will give support. Uh, we, we decided internally into the group that we will give support to him. And then afterwards, we had a meeting with the coordinators and the chair of the that was all that was all yesterday evening that was all yesterday at what time evening. did you go to bed if i may ask um, one o'clock but as i have to add we have to consult and did phil hogan go to bed knowing that he passed or not we, uh, uh, will, will you commute uh, when will he know he will know by tonight because well the, the thing was after the meeting we met then with the coordinators that's uh, i told you the spokesperson of every political group so i was representing my group and there were from the six other groups uh, the other uh, coordinators with the chair then we decided about three options there were three options on the table one is to reject the the candidate sorry for interrupting let's have a, a, a look what the id uh, question is quand est-ce que vous allez laisser l'économie servir les hommes et non le contraire. Ma question, c'est de savoir quand l'UE se mettra au service des peuples et non le contraire. La présidente élue a clairement fixé un cap. Et le cap, c'est de mettre non seulement l'Union, mais aussi l'économie au service des hommes et des femmes. Et tout ce qui est dans le programme présenté par la présidente et tout ce qui est dans les grandes lignes que je viens d'exposer a un objectif c'est de renforcer la protection sociale, l'état de protection sociale en Europe. C'est de renforcer, de réactiver le progrès social, en l'adaptant aussi à une économie qui change, à un environnement économique qui change, notamment la globalisation. Mais nous ne devons pas être naïfs dans cette globalisation. C'est pour ça aussi que nous devons apporter nos nos idées, nos concepts dans euh, euh, la gestion de cette globalisation. And Sur le dumping social, sorry je crois about que we'll, we'll l'actuelle commission uh, Nicolas, a fait uh, and get back to des it, uh, propositions in a, in a minute. I want to ask before getting back to Christophe's response on the Uh, I want to ask Robert because I heard you smiling, laughing together with uh, Mark when we were hearing this question from uh, the, um, the representative of uh, the nationalist uh, group. Uh, is that a kind of question one can expect from an MEP from the ID uh, group? Yeah, I think it is the kind of question. Uh, I mean, essentially part of what's going on here is a kind of political posturing or political grandstanding in some cases. Which is say, if you look at these hearings, part of it is about a sort of genuine and detailed accountability, that they're asking about policies and directions. Part of it, and particularly as you move towards the more extreme bits of the political spectrum, is simply about making a political point. You've got a theater, you've got a stage, and this is an opportunity in this case to ask a, a question to which there is no conceivable answer in two minutes, but you're simply indicating your own direction or you're indicating the sorts of things by which you're contesting a kind of mainstream consensus. So my question has to do with a topic that has been mentioned but just once, and that is brain drain. When we talk about upskilling, 
let's say we offer it to all European countries, right? And uh, the youth of all European countries is upskilled now, so that they're better trained and everything. What they will do, because we are a mobile generation, is moving to where better opportunities are, which is terrible for countries in the periphery, including Italy. Uh, myself, I'm moving here because I find better opportunities here. Uh, you are a, Italian. I'm Italian, yeah. Why did we have the brain drain? Why we, did we have, at a certain time, many, many Italians and, and Spanish people coming here and people from Poland? And that was during the economical crisis. And, and because it was not reacted, because we didn't have social policies, because Europe at that time, that was under the Barroso, uh, uh, had this totally liberal uh, uh, inspiration, people could not find jobs. And it was the young people who suffered the most. And that's what caused uh, this brain drain. But I'm sure that every person who grows up, does his studies in his country, and if he finds a good opportunity at home, you want to stay with your family, I mean, it's a good to travel and, as, and gather experience, but also, so I'm not so much worried about, about, uh, about this. And this is why it's so important that he talked about this convergence, that we have to, 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 to have less differences within the countries, uh, between the countries, but also within the countries. So first I want to thank you for this uh, very interesting, instructive, stimulating, critical discussion we had. I must say this is European democracy. And I think our member states, um, as we all, we come from our member states, we had responsibilities in our member states, Well, I do not know many member states where such an exercise takes place. And we should really be proud of this democratic system. I'm interested to know what your impressions are on the uh, performance of uh, Nicola Schmidt. Uh, I mean, overall, I mean, it, it's clearly a very good performance. A very good performance in a context where, where there wasn't really any doubt. This is not one of the more sensitive nominations or one that anybody expected to be contested. Uh, we're going to have, I think, a couple of those in the coming days. Mark. Yes, I think he did his homework. I'm very, I'm very satisfied, but I'm also very impressed and I'm very, very proud also. But um, I'm, I'm not surprised because I know him and I, I, I've seen him as a minister in the Luxembourg parliament, how he was debating with us. So he's very at ease uh, in the dialogue with parliamentarians. And uh, as he said, he will do that in the European parliament too. Thank you for uh, being with us. Thank you.